Welcome to IDB everyone. It is Andrew here. Home, and that is the third party home app and not the one installed on your phone, is by far my favorite HomeKit application. It allows you to control literally everything. They even have a really handy Apple Watch app that works really, really well. It recently got a big update to take advantage of all the new features inside of iOS 11. Home version 3.0 adds a new user interface that looks really nice on iOS 11, even the dark mode, and has a ton of new automation tools. In fact, iOS 11 brought a ton of new automation aspects to HomeKit. If you want to see everything new with iOS 11 and HomeKit, check out that whole video, but we're going to focus solely on the new Home 3 app, which takes advantage of all the cool new features in HomeKit, as well as things like drag and drop. What I like about Home is that it provides you the most details on your HomeKit accessories. You can do more in this app than almost any other HomeKit application out there. We're going to go through the app on a high level as well as touching on all the new features. You can control multiple homes from the Home app. You can actually add several here so if you have different houses or different people's houses that you can control, all those are viewable there and you can jump between them. When you go into a home, you can view all of your different accessories. This is a high level view, it has all the accessories and everything in underneath of them. So like the dimmer switch, there's actually four button controls underneath of that because there's four different commands that you can do. We can also see all of our rooms, all of our zones, and any home hubs that you happen to have. This is a great high level view of all the accessories that you have in your home. Moving over to the services tab, we can see each thing room by room and what's going on there, whether it's buttons, motion detectors, lights, or anything in between. You can see we have the living room, we have the kitchen, and you can tap into any of those to view more information. You can swipe left to turn lights on or off. And I really like how much detail you can see in here. So for instance, this LED light, this happens to be the Eve outlet. I can see all this stuff, including power consumption, voltage, wattage, everything else that's going on. For my thermostat downstairs, my Ecobee 4, we can see a ton of information here, all these different thresholds. Now, one thing that's always been a little bit of a pain is something that has a lot of values. These sliders don't work very well. You can tap on the plus and minus buttons, but when the ranges are astronomical, it's extremely difficult to narrow down exactly what it is you're trying to get. But that's just a minor annoyance, pretty much the only annoyance I have with this whole application. When you're setting up your smart home, you can easily do it with the Apple Home app, but there's so much more detail that you can get from an app like this. This is what you need to take your smart home, your home kit home, to the next level. When you're viewing any of these accessories and you tap into them, there's a little heart in the top right hand corner. If you tap on that heart, that'll favorite it and allow it to show up on like your Apple Watch. Anything that has that favorite will show up on your Apple Watch. Everything that doesn't have a favorite will not. Inside of the groups tab, it's really interesting because it's not groups that you've made. I mean, it is those, but it's also more. For instance, they automatically have a group for the inside outlets or all of your motion sensors. I love how they group these together and it makes me think of things I didn't even think of. Like you could have all ceiling lights and turn off all of those together. Groups that you didn't even think about, just being able to put them together, if you make more groups, it just makes it more natural to tell Siri how to control your home because you're just saying, turn off all of the ceiling lights and it can happen. Then we have scenes as well as trigger actions on the bottom. These are exactly what you'd think and you can create new ones from here as well. Tap on that plus button in the top right hand corner or hit edit to remove some of the ones that you have. Scenes are really handy because they can automate using any of these different automation controls. Again, you can tap on edit to remove and that plus one to add new ones in. Here is where we see a lot of the new features coming from iOS 11 because there's a lot of new automation things that we can do. For instance, location events. Before it just used to be when you would arrive and when you leave, but now it's when anyone leaves or when the first person arrives. So you don't want it to be, you know, when someone's already home, you don't want to come home and have the lights come on again because they're already there. So same thing for when you're leaving. You don't want to have the lights turn off when you leave if there's still someone at home. So they can only be when the last person leaves or when the first person leaves or arrives. We also have sunrise and sunset. You can now opt to do this before or after sunrise and sunset and not directly on it. Maybe I want the lights to come on 15 minutes before sunset. That's absolutely doable. Then we have these ones at the bottom that are based on different triggers. So for instance, when this light comes on, also turn on these other lights. It's really easy to do. We also can do countdowns. That's kind of a sleep timer. So maybe after 12 hours, turn this light back off. So when you go in, you turn a light on, it'll automatically turn itself off after a certain amount of time. Of course, you can also disable this feature as well. So it only happens one time. Under condition, we have a lot of new conditions as well. 
So there's all the old ones as well as some of the new ones. I really like the people presence one. So for instance, this will only trigger when people are home. Why do you want something to trigger on a motion sensor if you are not home? Your cat does not need to have the lights on. I like how they gave you some ideas for getting started on these. For instance, you have the ones like smoke detector or when the Ecobee detects motion. They come up with ideas based on things you already have. They know you have that Ecobee for, so they use that as an option. Same thing for the temperature and all of those. Of course, if you don't have an accessory, like I don't have a smoke detector installed right now, it'll let you know and take you to their website where you can find some that you might want to buy. The interface also has been refreshed. It looks really nice and even works with that new Smart Invert Dark Mode. So it's not a native dark mode in here, but they made it work with that Smart Invert Mode like many other apps have. I've taken that Smart Invert Mode and tied it to the accessibility gesture of triple clicking my home button. So whenever I triple click, I get that little pop-up that says Smart Invert and I can choose that and it'll turn my display to dark mode or back to light mode. Home 3 has by far been the most capable third party HomeKit application on the market. And with this new update version 3 to take advantage of everything iOS 11, it makes it even further ahead of the competition. If you want to check this out and take your HomeKit home to the next level, definitely do it and you can use it in the you can use the link below in the description. Let us know what you think or your other favorite HomeKit applications down in the comments. Go ahead and subscribe. And until next time, it's Andrew for ITB.